So I started off at 5'4", is when I got the surgery done, and now I'm 5'7". You are potentially devastating compl complications. It is kind of crazy. You're breaking both of your femurs to, or I did, broke both of my femurs to get this surgery. So I basically had just two sticks of bone and a little metal bar in between hand. So your bones effectively didn't grow back together? Yeah, that's exactly it, yeah. We have to be very careful about what we do and how it's done. Yeah, if it goes wrong, if it goes catastrophically wrong. It is a wild thing that you're doing, but if it's going to make you happier in the long run, then it's worth it. A lot of people would probably like to be a few inches taller. From dating shows... I wasn't told I can handsome. ...to countless articles linking size and success, being small is seen as a big disadvantage and something you can't do much about. Until now. Limb lengthening surgery is a long, expensive and painful undertaking, which nonetheless is growing in popularity, including here in the UK. Costing anything up to an eye-watering £120,000, it claims to be able to help patients grow by a staggering 13 centimetres taller. It was pioneered by this man, Gavril Elizarov, a Soviet doctor treating injured soldiers returning from the Second World War. Techniques have changed during the last 70 years, but many of the principles remain the same. A hole is drilled into the leg bone, which is then literally broken in two. A metal rod is put inside and held in place by a number of screws. It's this rod which is lengthened a little bit each day, extending until the patient reaches their desired height and their bones are finally allowed to heal back together. The surgery was once reserved for people with a serious injury or deformity, but an increasing number of people are having the procedure simply because they just don't like their height. It's available in more than a dozen countries, from Germany, the US, Russia, Serbia, India, South Korea, Turkey, Greece, Italy, and even here in the UK. As a five foot seven mountain of a man myself, I can understand why people might be tempted by this kind of surgery. But taking such drastic measures for just a few inches does feel a bit extreme. Not to mention the time, the pain, and the sheer cost of the procedure, there's also the very real risk of serious complications. But some people are willing to take those risks. I want to meet these people to find out what led them to getting the surgery, what their experiences have been, and how their lives have changed, for better or for worse. So I guess I started thinking about it a little bit more my senior year of high school and like women generally don't date guys that are shorter than them so it's kind of tough to be a guy and approach a girl that's taller than you like sometimes i would fester on not being able to find a wife or thinking that girls would just like never look at me when we were out in public so how have you changed physically and then as a consequence how has your life changed so i started off at 5'4 is when i got the surgery done and now i'm 5'7 and I'm not the tallest person in the room, but in terms of like perspective, like I still definitely think about height. I just think about it a lot less, and I don't think about it as me being too short anymore. Obviously, you were really aware of the potential consequences and that they can be quite severe before you got the surgery. Uh, were you scared before getting it, or what was your? How were you feeling? I think you would be naive to say that you weren't scared. It is kind of crazy. You're breaking both of your femurs to, or I did, broke both of my femurs to get this surgery. So it's like, you kind of have to rationalize that it is a wild thing that you're doing, but if it's gonna make you happier in the long run, then it's worth it. Before I let Sam go, I had a final question. It's one thing having the surgery at a world leading hospital, but what about the people going to the cheaper clinics popping up all over the world? There are people in, that get these surgeries done by doctors who really don't know what they're doing. And mm. like, that's a scary thing, you know? It's not something that you can just have done and not think about four months, six months after the surgery. You have to really know what's going on and still be in contact with your doctor after that so that you can get the full benefits and rehabilitation that you actually want to get out of the surgery. I can empathize completely with wanting to do something about your height, but is it really worth putting your body directly in harm's way? According to my research, more and more people are deciding it is worth it. Several clinics are performing leg lengthening operations at five times the rate they were just 10 years ago, and hundreds of people are having it done each year. 
To find out more, I'm on my way to visit Dr. Goodyear, a renowned orthopaedic surgeon in London. Dr. Goodyear specialises in limb reconstruction for people with an injury or deformity. But what I'm interested in is his experience treating people with complications from leg lengthening procedures they've had abroad. So people when faced with a choice of going somewhere, I say it was reputable, but somewhere with very experienced limb deformity or limb reconstruction surgical expertise versus getting it done on the cheap, I don't think people are necessarily made aware of all the things that can go wrong that often do go wrong while seeking out a limb lengthening department. I have had a patient who particularly sticks in my mind who had significant lengthening of his tibias and ended up with rapid onset arthritis. Others who spent months and months and months doing the rehab and eventually lost their jobs, their income stream, ended up fairly bad off. So it's, it's, it's moderate to high risk surgery. But Again, the patients often consider the, the outcome and the rewards to be worth it. I also wanted to know why he thinks someone who's otherwise physically healthy might opt for such serious surgery. Most people who I've come across who've wanted cosmetic lengthening actually have quite often psychological problems, body dysmorphic disorders and other problems where they have had years of depression and introspection about their perceived disability from their height. So I think we're getting to the realms of are we actually treating a body dysmorphic disorder or are we actually giving people a lifestyle choice? So that boundary between what's a therapeutic intervention for people with body dysmorphic disorder who could be helped by lengthening versus people who want a lifestyle choice to be a bit taller is often a difficult and blurred boundary. In order to get a sense of just how serious a procedure it is, I wanted to speak with someone who had met with complications. I got chatting to a British man who had the surgery five years ago, growing from 5'6 to 5'9. Barney's situation is different. He had a condition which meant he required surgery to straighten his legs. He then opted to have the leg lengthening procedure at the same time, reassured that it could all be done together and it wouldn't affect his recovery time. Unfortunately, he's been dealing with problems ever since. So, can you describe what your complications were? Yeah, okay, so really my, my only complication was the fact that my bone separation was happening faster than my bone growth would happen. So basically my legs would be, my bones were being pulled apart um, at a, quite a fast rate, but my bone growth wasn't there. So therefore on the x-rays you could sort of see it, sort of like you know, the gap getting bigger and bigger and bigger and nothing. So I basically had just two sticks of bone and a little metal bar in between hand. So your bones effectively didn't grow back together? Yeah, that's exactly it, yeah. You go in and you're left with the belief that, oh, it's only gonna be three months out of my life and you cater for that. And so you get so many people who book this time, have a surgery, get spat out on the other side, and whether they go to China, whether they go to Japan, Hong Kong, and it is, it's totally global. But their employer is like, you're not fit, you can't come back. And that's when like mortgage repayments suddenly start collapsing, they're unemployed. And not only are they unemployed, they're unemployable. Yeah, but when things go wrong, then you kind of do need a support network. Fortunately, I, I managed it. I, 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 I was fortunate, but yeah, it's, it, if it goes wrong, it goes catastrophically wrong. Well, yeah, would you, would you recommend it to someone? Would you recommend it to oh. someone since you get that's a difficult one. Would I recommend it? Because, right, the cost, I mean, financially, it is whatever it is. But everything else is life changing. And there is an immense amount of pain. It's like your entire, every nerve in your legs are being stretched. And so, therefore, there are times when you can't escape anywhere in your head from the pain. It is absolutely excruciating. I think if it was easy, let's face it, everyone wants to be taller, then it would be happening. The fact that it is very, very, very rare is because it is so, so difficult. And then if you did your research and found out how painful it is, um, a lot of people, I don't think there'd be so many people who would do it. 